Ah, on this episode of Tinkering with Trent, now you see that Tommy and the Cruzy have discovered a beautiful video game called Driver X. I am removing the stock suspension, putting it where it belongs. I'm gonna wipe all this shit down first, and then we're gonna drop the fender in. Because the damn car, let me tell you about the other Corvette disappointments that are going on. This is so stressful. Just drop it down on the tire. and Probably gonna build myself another bagger soon. The Play hippies tried to move into town when I was a kid, and the hologers went and rounded them up and drug them down to the river. It blows my mind how serious people take me sometimes. Got a lot of tour pack installation going on here at Cruise Original. There you go. Just goes on that easily. Good morning. <laughs> ah, on this episode of Tinkering with Trent, we're gonna be working on Terry's motorcycle. Uh, I'm gonna put together Terry's saddlebags, Ryan's <laughs> doing some things, <laughs> and then uh, he's gonna put the rear suspension, saddlebag rails, rear fender. We're tinkering with Terry today, and Trent. I'm Trent, he's Ryan. Hmm. More Ad Van Black stuff. I thought this job was gonna be a lot easier. I was like, oh man, just putting lids on the bags, done. I don't have to take apart this whole mechanism. Of course I do. Cause he got new bag latches and locks, which it's a lot easier to do on these than it is on the oh, like 13 and earlier bags. Cause those were just a shit show. These actually come apart really easy. I'm just bitching. You know what? I am gonna have a seat oh, on my new chair. Ooh, they come with their own reflectors. Uh, latches for the locks. And even hardware. Leave them out. You know, look at the curb. These aren't. And this is some really cheap ass This isn't even 3M, this is like half an M. That's like the shittiest double-sided stick tape I've ever seen. And these are flats, so they're gonna go like this. They're gonna crack. The tips aren't even gonna sit. Yep. That shit tape is not gonna hold that down. Don't let this bun fool you, I can get shit done. Do you see what's going on over here? Just, you know, give me a little pan right over here. You see? Well, Ryan got a new simulator. And Thomas has a computer. So I'm putting motorcycles together. And they're figuring out the simulator. Important work here at Cruzy Originals. Now you see that Tommy and the Cruzy have discovered a beautiful video game called Driver X. With Cruzy's okay, new so simulator and Tommy's computer, they're making it happen. While Trent is over here working on motorcycles, they're playing video games. This isn't video games, <laughs> this is training. So when you're putting the bag latch back on the bottom of the bag. I don't know what this part of the bag's called. There's some technical, somebody will put it in the comments. It's like there's this fabric we need to pick flap that holds the bag lid. When you pop them open, it holds Probably it open. So when you go to so bolt go all four of them, you'll notice that it covers yeah, the so two inside ones. So when you go to put them on, thread all of them in loosely and that'll line up this bracket and then you can tighten the middle two down. So tighten the middle two as such. I'm sure there's a torque spec for these tiny, tiny little bolts, but I'm not gonna go for my toolbox for these little guys. Just snug them up nice and tight. And then you can loosen these outside guys here. 
and everything's all lined up. So I'm gonna flap this back over, put it back in the hole, ignore Ryan's motorcycle or motor noise over there. Pretending. His pretending noise, his training noise. And boom, just like that, everything lines up nice and perfect. You don't have to battle with it, call it an mf -er and all that good stuff. Tinkering with Trent. Here we go, found it. Wow, these cut so much better than mine. Looks like shit, I'm gonna clean it up, but I just wanna, you know, cut, measure, cut, measure. That looks pretty good. Clears, just gonna clean up that edge a little bit and get this mounted up. Shit. So I'm using a hand file on this. We have like a belt sander and much more aggressive tools, but this is so brittle, it'll chew real fast. So I'm just gonna use a hand file and take my time gingerly and clean up that edge. Got that all trimmed up. The wiring is gonna go into the fender straight out. It's not gonna bend or anything like that. It's gonna go straight into the fender. So you want the plate to clear straight, which it does. And then you look at the plate. You don't see any gaps or anything up there. Putting her on the fender. And also, I'll just put a slight, ooh. These California license plates are really brittle. Put a little slight bend. Good quality chair makes all the difference. The goal is to have a back half of Terry's bike in two days. The lofty goal, especially since we just got the driving simulator all hooked up and we're going to do a little drifting in between, you know, installs. He's going to be doing some filing, getting the old paint out. I'm going to be doing some shock installing and moving forward. I am removing the stock suspension, putting it where it belongs, in the old trash. I don't hoard shit like that or keep it around. I know a lot of people do. I keep all them OEM parts, you'd sell them someday. I'd rather have the room. Comes with a bunch of spacers for shimming out your shocks. The rest of this stuff is all for the reservoir mounts. All right, top guy, phone's ringing. These are pressed, I'm bleeding. So they have a curved side and a flush side. It's flat, sharp edge, curved edge. I like to put the curved edge against the spherical bearing. Good rotation. These guys are pretty much just nice and smooth all the way around. A Little bit of red Loctite here. Forty-five foot-pounds. It's a half-inch bolt. She's a big one. All right. I don't need to yak this dude up a bunch. Put the guy, the other dude, on the other side first. So I did the right side first. I've preached this a hundred times on a bagger, especially you always want to put the right shock on first because you have to lower the bike down to get the left one to match up. I don't know why that was or why that is, but on every single bagger I've ever worked on, the right side is always longer than the left side. And it's not the shock, it's just the way the bike is set up. It has to do with probably weighting or something because of the primary on this side. But somebody knows, let me know. But this one I had to lower quite a bit to get this side to match up and it's like that on every bagger. It's how I was taught to do it from the get-go by the old boys that taught me how to work on motorcycles years ago and it's factual. Oh, yeah. Look at that, she's yacked up in the air. Shocks are on. Uh, Trent is ready to put a fender in I believe. Yep. I'm gonna wipe all this shit down first and then we're gonna drop the fender in. This stuff right here, this piece of hose, this is, uh, if you're looking like a Dyna, they have this shit stuck along the inside of the fender and that's where they run all their wiring in. So this is a bunch of it. We buy it in bulk. We have a lot of it. So you can, I'll show you what we're gonna do with it. So we pull this dude off. This is real 3M sticky stuff, not half an M bullshit. You wanna clean the inside of the fender out with some alcohol or some brake clean, something to get it extremely clean. Um, how about you throw some heat shrink on this dude? Heat shrinker down to like the last 
four inches or so. And then there you go. We got a little exit hole right there. Factory, early 2000s factory, but factory. Uh, just measuring out the heat shrink I'm gonna need for this. When getting wires through wire loom, it's always kind of a bitch because you can kind of push it through, but with how like thin this wire is, they're not like solid enough. They always bend once they meet any resistance. So I just push it through as far as I can. So like here, it doesn't want to push anymore. Do this. Push. 1500 degree. Yes, it's a blow dryer. 1500 degree blow dryer. Take the hair off you real quick. I think this is Ryan's old blow dryer from, yep, look at this. Tile, Eugene. Eugene Tile and Marble. He was a tile, tile setter back in Eugene, Oregon. That is from like 2004. Just goes to show, Milwaukee is a hell of a brand. Ran that over with her car drunk one night. Opened the garage door and went plowing straight into the garage when I used to work out of the garage many years ago and drove over all my tools, plowed into my toolbox. I was pretty stoked. That's how I got the other heat gun that we have now too. So I have two Milwaukee's. I'm like, you're buying me a new heat gun. I don't know where that one is. I think it went to shit. It did. The new one shit the bed, the old one's still going strong. It also goes to show they just don't make things like they used to. 2013 versus 2004. Oh, a quality jump there. Like to twist them, it makes them a little more stiff when you twist them, you know? They don't bend as much. Twist your nipple, Steve. And then you just fish. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Look at this side, look at this side. Go up here, up here, I'm up so here. Excited. Ready, ready? I'm ready. Boop. There's that. And then final. Beep. She's ran. We are eliminating the horn because, I mean, I don't blow a horn and I ain't blowing nothing else, so we don't really run them around here. Uh, this is a My Machinist horn delete. It says My Machinist on the front of it. You gotta get a little adver adversements. Shout out. I think his name's Justin at My Machinist. Shout out to, I think his name's Justin at My Machinist. Forgot your name wrong, sorry. I thought this was for a twin cam. No, the twin cam's longer. That's what she said. I have the twin cam one on my motor over there because on the earlier twin cams, it deletes the choke mount for the carburetor. Ooh. It's a bracket that looks just like that, so there's no mount for the carburetor or for the choke. Which, if you have a Makuni, you can just mount the choke right on the Makuni itself. Yeah. Which I have one for mine that's been sitting in my toolbox for probably seven years. I never put it on. I got it for the old Pusway Magneto and never put it never on. Never put it on, huh? No. Yeah. Once the carburetor was on, I didn't feel like taking it off again. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> like, well, Usually you know, there she is. I'm not with this again. A lot of having to say things over again. Next door with my damn car shit is where it is. Is the damn car. Let me tell you about the other Corvette disappointments that are going on. I have a dyno appointment on the 20th. It is the 12th. I don't have a steering rack because mine's leaking badly and they don't make them anymore. Conveniently, they quit making them. So you have to get refurbished ones. Basically you can get one for 500 bucks off of Amazon or $1,400 from Detroit Locker, which I'm going with the Amazon one. It's refurbished. I ordered it last week, it's supposed to be here on the 15th. Uh, I checked my order today. They said that my order was canceled for some reason. So I had to order it from another Amazon distributor. And now it won't be here until after my dyno appointment. So my dyno appointment, which I made two months ago because dude is booked out two months in advance, I just had to cancel. So now I don't have another fucking dyno appointment for almost two and a half months. So there's another two and a half months of not driving my fucking car. So it's gonna be summertime by the time the thing's ready and it will be too hot to even drive. So I'm pretty much just I'm done with it. I'm not going to deal with it no more. I'm going to pick up my mess over there and just leave that thing setting for the time being and not waste my time and stress out on that cocksucker anymore. I got lots of motorcycle shit to do and I got a driving simulator so I'll just pretend it goes in from underneath. Watch the edges. This is so stressful. Just drop it down on the tire and just let it sit right in the tire right there. There we go. Leave her there for a bit. I'll come help you in a moment. You hold this gas tank up for me? Actually, take that gas tank off. Yep. Look at that. That's a nice piece. That is a good looking piece of material right there. It's made by my machinist. Horn elimination kit. If you feel like eliminating horns, not this kind, but the hoo-hoo kind. My machinist has it for you. I think your name is Justin. 
fucking owe me now. <laughs> Pretty nice shit. Dude makes nice stuff. We've used a lot of his stuff throughout many videos. Mini at Bag Air Projects. Probably gonna build myself another bagger soon. Maybe. Maybe. Should I? Maybe? Should I? Yeah, what do you think? Comment down below. Should we build another bagger for Cruzy Originals? Don't have one at the moment. Ain't got nothing but stunt bikes and race bikes at the moment. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm, maybe. The other side. This fender weighs nothing. Yeah, it is super light. It's like paper. I put the bags together and like moved them and then I grabbed the fender and I like picked it up super fast. I was like, oh shit. Smack super yourself super right light. in the face. <laughs> and I'm gonna hold this bitch in place so you ratchet those in. Looks pretty good. This is a really crooked fender. It was not uh, straight when we started, so I did a lot of grinding and manipulating and some moving and shaping and shifting and all that jazz. Which one do you want me to start with? Give me that back corner back there first. You got a little bit of play in the old frame holes, so you kind of got to move it this way. <whistles> I'm lifting up on this dude and pulling down on this dude, yep. And then you can tighten them in different sequences to get it to kind of pull one way or the other. And it's not a lot, so very little actually, but when it comes to trying to make things look dialed, Every little bit counts. Hippies hate water, water, bump, ba dump, bump, bump, bump. Who sang that? Just kind of snug them down a little bit at a time each side and work your way around. Remember the song though? That you're dangerously close to being a hippie. Being Me? Hippie. Yeah, but I was raised by loggers that burned hippies, so. He's old school Oregon. Yeah, I'm from, I'm from the days when Oregon was hardcore and like. My dad was a logger, and his dad was a logger, and his dad was a logger. They like and to the play hippies with tried to move into town when I was a kid, and the loggers went and rounded them up and drug them down to the river and scrubbed them with pumice stones and kicked them on out of town. Stupid <laughs> hippies screaming to her, you gotta stop making paper bags at all the grocery stores when I was a kid. They were putting all the paper mills out of companies and putting all these families out on the street because paper bags were killing the environment. We need plastic bags! And now it's fucking, you can't even get by a bag in California because guess what you got rid of paper bags which were recyclable for plastic bags that people just throw in the earth now and you're f***ed. you can throw a paper bag in the old trash and it just turned into earth again biodegradable bio degradable but oh no it's killing the f***ing spotted owl f the spotted owl there used to be a burger joint in my hometown called the cedar shack and their, their top selling burger was the spotted owl burger it was great it was so Good, I want to go there again. I wonder if they still have the spotted owl burger at that place. The place closed down when I was a kid, but then it reopened since I've been gone. You couldn't eat a real spotted owl, they were endangered. It was I did have called a, the spotted owl. Yeah, they called it a spotted owl burger because everybody was like, F the spotted owl. So they were literally owl? putting like thousands and thousands of families out of work. You really ate an owl? I'm sick. I'm done. I'm we saved four spotted owls, but 1,700 families starved last year. I had a pet spotted owl for a while. Caught one in Butch Hartman's backyard when we were like early 20s. It's cuter than fuck. Kept it. Then I found out it was a felony to have a spotted owl for a pet, so we killed it. So you killed it. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. June shut the camera off real fast. We took it to the animal protective place. It was cute, And then man. they killed it. It was like this big, and its head was like this big, and it had this little tiny body, and it was just a little spotted owl. My dad would have killed it. One time when I was a little kid, there used to be wolves in Oregon, long time ago, real rare, right? We're way up in the mountains, fucking around, and we see a pack of like three of them go running across the thing. He's like, holy shit, those are Oregon timber wolves. Those are the, probably the last ones in Oregon. Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. <whistles> boom, 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 start shooting. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, asshole? <laughs> those are the last ones? You just smoked them. He was a fucking maniac. I watched him beat a fucking beaver to death with a shovel one time so he could get its pelt. A beaver just rotted in our backyard. <laughs> Never got the bell. Fuck either. no, he just drug it home. <laughs> Have you ever seen a beaver in real life? Beavers they're are big, huge. Huh? Yeah, they're like like that tall. Yeah. Like the size of Maverick, but beefier. Like the fuckers would kill Maverick. Yep, growing up in the wilderness. It's a different world. I know there's plenty of you country folk out there that know what I'm talking about. We killed the fuck out of everything growing up. We ate everything too, but I don't kill shit now. Like I won't go hunting. I don't want to kill no animals. I'd rather take pictures up. of them. I think they're beautiful. But when I was young, I would shoot the fuck out of deer. That's how we were living. Yeah, it'll be Back of the up. truck, 22 <laughs> long rifles. Sup, pop, pop, pop. We're fucking eating tonight. Woohoo! Backstrap it is. Different times, you know, when you live in a tent, you gotta eat something. Fender's on. How nice does that bad boy look? I can't even wipe it down because we ain't got no fork and microfibers. Oh. Rags ain't been by in a minute. I got it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. Here, push that thing down. Wire yeah. comes right out there. Fenders are on. Now I'm gonna put on the <laughs> covering apparatuses. 
and uh, bolt up some more shit. Maybe I want a t-shirt press. Man, many years ago, I used to make all Cruise Originals t-shirts on the table in my kitchen. Where are we going? I'll snug that guy down. I'll grab the other side. Man, what could I eat right now? I haven't cut my hair or shaved because I need to lose some weight. I weigh 230 right now. I'd like to get down to 215 and hopefully get my cholesterol down as well because my cholesterol is like 255, which is pretty f***ing high. So I work out hard. I work out extremely hard. I train very, very hard, but... Can't outrun a bad diet. I also eat clean, which f***ing pisses me off because my diet is pretty good for the most part. Oh, Gina's like, but you eat cheese. I eat cheese. It's full of protein and it's really good. But I don't eat shit food. I eat like meat, cheese, and vegetables and rice. But I gotta go even more hard. Where is the other fing rail? So, back to the hair and beard. Mm -hmm. I hate having a beard. Absolutely hate it. I'm using it as Sounds motivation like to cut a little weight because I'm not gonna shave until I'm down to 215. I could lose some weight, I guess. I could be leaner. I haven't seen an ab in a while. So I've been eating lots of just salad and fruits and vegetables and cut rice out pretty much and just eating vegetables and meat. You got the socket for the little guy over there? Once I can get down to 215, shave this goddamn shit off my face. I think I'm gonna cut my hair though. I wasn't gonna cut my hair either, but I'm getting pretty sick of that. Would you look at that? Yeah, so we just run our belt like so. Probably put this dude on top and then hose clamp this dude up somewhere. A spacer to hose clamp it right there? I think so, yeah. So we never run them this way. We always put them up here on top. This is the, the factory where you run Legend stuff. Not a real fan of putting it down here, but this is where he wants them. Out of sight, out of mind, kind of. So yeah, if we do it like that, mm -hmm. this will keep it off the saddlebag. That'll look nice. Looks better all black. I'm trying to hide them. Just gonna hide them. These are fancy custom cycle dynamics turn signal. Are they are they tail light too? I'm guessing everything. Hopefully, because that's all he's got, Yerd. Would you just look at that? Clip right in, they fill in that ugly gap. Let me get my fingerprints off of this thing. Looks like something from the future. It does. That's a goddamn flux capacitor. <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need roads, Marty. Are these on the website? I will make sure Tommy puts them on the website. If you ever see something on here and you're like, man, that looks pretty sick, and you go on our website and you can't find it, you can always just Google Cruzy Originals and the phone number comes right up and you can call and talk to Thomas. He's a nice guy up front with a foreign accent. He'll get right on whatever you need and he'll, he'll be a boot to get her done for you. He's not really foreign, he's from, where is it? Minnesota, Min Minnesota Wisconsin? Minnesota, yeah. Minnesota, don't you know. It does have an accent. It really brings a lot of joy to my day, honestly. Every time I catch a little bit of that, you know, I'm like, it's awesome. Reminds me of a great episode of Supernatural where they teamed up with a little sheriff who was up there in Minnesota and she was just a joy. I'm having one hell of a time trying to get this goddamn backing off of this. Don't you know. If he gets it off in two seconds, I swear to God, I'm gonna throw a fit. Well, I don't got it either. Do you need a woman to do it? <sighs> No, I want to get it done today. <laughs> Zing! <laughs> we don't have time for a corporate meeting, June. Still here. Hallelujah! It just easily, you get the tape off the back and then that thing just pops right in there easily, just like that. that Snap, crack, a pop. Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies. Those looks nice. Fresh rags from our homie rags. We just got 150 microfibers, so we have enough to last us some eons. The only new freshies touch the motorcycles. We could throw some saddlebags on this Biatch, huh? Let's run the wire. Oh no, we gotta put the tour pack mounts on. 
And the wiring for this shit still too. Uh, See the little points we could zip tie yeah. it up to you? You want yeah. to run it that way? and That'd be what they're for. Do it just like factory. Fact oh, factory. Factory. They come with a bunch of zip ties over there too. Look at that, fully preparationed. Ooh, and a f***ing harness. God, I love it when they do that. Plug and play installation. I love it just... when the quality comes together. Let me get three ties. One, two, three. You're only allotted these three ties. Use them wisely. We don't have enough zip ties to go around in this economy, you know? Some guy commented on me talking about the crayons, and now you can't get the beeswax in the tool stores anymore. Mm -hmm. I go, it's because of the liberals, and he's like, Really, Ryan? You can get beeswax anywhere. It's not because of liberals. I thought you were smarter than that. I want to be like, you know, I Sounds thought you like were smart enough. I thought you were smart enough to get a f***ing joke. It blows my mind how serious people take me sometimes. Listen, unless I'm talking about motorcycle facts, I'm talking shit. Plain and simple. No matter how serious I sound when I'm delivering it, I'm not. I talk a lot of shit. It's all for the funny for me. Everything is. Everything is because I think it's funny. <clears throat> Most people do think it's funny too, but there is always the occasional commenter that is like, clearly doesn't f***ing get the joke. <laughs> and I reply to them very nicely. Now a lot of tour pack installation going on here at Cruise Original. Honestly, I, I don't think, uh, since I have been in business for Cruise Originals and not working for some big wheel bagger builder. I ain't put a tour pack on a long time. Yo, this jams it right into the fing paint. Really? Yeah, yeah, try it. What do we do about that? Have to space it out like a son of a borch. I need to shim this dude out just a little bit because the fitment on this fender more bulbous on this side than it is on this side. So I got clearance, no clearance. Clarence is over here, Clarence left the building on this side. It's probably because of the twist in this fender, how she twists, it's twisting it into this because it's got like a yeah to it. Trying to get one of these muffs behind here is gonna be a forking nightmare. I don't think I can do it. I'm gonna be straight up with y'all right now. Put it on the back of that maybe, and then feed yeah. her down. And then as soon as you pull that out to put the bolt in there, she's gone. Give it some like pressure to hold it. They have me super glue. This is rubber sealant for electrical connectors. and fornicators about to have some saddlebags on the back of it. We just need a basic, basic algorithm here. Not even close, huh? Uh-uh. Going. Yep. It won't lock down. Let's slide it back. There she is. Yeah. Here, I'll pull down and try and move that thing. <laughs> you can't even get over it. Mm -mm, can't. <laughs> mm, look at that. That clears. See, Jim? They open. There you go. Just goes on that easily. Smooth, easy fitting Chinese tour pack. Yeah, tell them to look at we the didn't lock. pick it out. You got it? Yep. So it needs to be all the way forward, it looks like. We can lock that shit down. I can get a, yeah, you can get a wrench under here anyway. That's perfect. Looks pretty good. Getting it off is going to be a mother yeah. funker. That thing's staying on there until it leaves. Terry, you can deal with that shit yourself, bud. That thing fits like yeah. shit. Quick release my ass. There she is. Big old fat ass touring machine. Next, we'll work on the primary, the exhaust, and the floorboards. And we're pretty close to having this thing done, actually. Probably another week's worth of work, but in intervals. We gotta do Herman's bike first, but we just tore that whole motor down. The crank is at the crank shop. 
down at Naylor Performance. The crank's getting rebuilt. The pinion shaft was pretty toast on it. So, getting the old crank pro plugged, welded, trued, balanced, and all that jive. We're gonna build them a nice little 95 inch. Should be a little ripper. Get that thing done, but while we're waiting on different things to come back and forth from that, we're gonna be working on this guy some more. The stunt tail, the fuel line from the fuel tank to the injectors broke, got pinched, and she was toast and just old from 2008. So I got a new one on the way. New injectors, new everything. We're just gonna replace all of it because why not? We put a new coil in it and new plug wires and just gonna keep freshening the thing up and riding it. We got a lot of stuff going on. Car's on pause because I'm real pissed. We did buy a driving simulator though and it is a really good time. And other than that, like, subscribe, taste, stay, stay, paste toasted, paste, pay toasted. Cruiseriesals.com. Thanks for watching. Peace. <laughs>